Once, I was playing a horror mod pack in Minecraft, and all of a sudden my character started glitching out. The sky turned red, and creepy music started playing. Then, this black, glitchy figure appeared in the distance and started coming towards me. I tried running away, but the ground glitched out, and I fell into the void. Oh, right, it was that. When I loaded up the second part of the Jerry video, everything seemed normal at first. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a blood-curdling scream coming from my computer speakers. I tried to turn down the volume, but it just kept getting louder and louder. I almost had a heart attack. It was like Jerry was trying to break through the game and attack me in real life. On that rainy night, I was feeling restless because I'd been having a tough time with some personal stuff. It was like my mind just wouldn't shut off and let me rest. I tried all the usual tricks. Reading, listening to calming music, even sipping on chamomile tea. But nothing seemed to work. The rain out didn't help either, creating this constant drumming soundtrack that made it feel like my thoughts were echoing in my head. By the time midnight rolled around, I was still wide awake, staring at the ceiling. With a sigh, I pushed myself up from my bed and flipped on my computer. I figured that maybe doing something productive or distracting would help take my mind off things. As the computer booted up, I could hear the rain continue to patter outside, like it was the soundtrack to my restless night. I navigated to Minecraft and started up a game. As the world loaded in, I realized it was the toy dollhouse map from Gabby's dollhouse. Despite being a bit too old for it, I found something oddly comforting about the familiar scenery. It was like stepping into a more cheerful and imaginative version of reality. As I spawned into the world, I found myself inside the toy dollhouse. Everything looked as it had the last time I played. The bright colors, the cozy rooms filled with toys and furniture, and the cute little cat character named Muffin standing nearby. But something felt off. There was a strange stillness in the air, and the usually cheery atmosphere felt tense. As I looked closer at the screen, I noticed something horrifying. Lying motionless on the ground was Jerry, the cat. His body was twisted and limp, like a rag doll that had been dropped carelessly. A pool of digital blood spilled around him, and his once bright eyes were now dull and vacant. I felt my stomach turn as the realization sunk in that something extremely dark had happened here. The other cats were there, gathered around Jerry's lifeless body. They were all visibly distressed, tears streaming down their faces as they mourned their fallen comrade. Muffin stood awkwardly in the back, looking guilty and avoiding eye contact with the other cats. It was clear that she had been the cause of Jerry's death, and the tension between her and the other cats was palpable. The other cats looked at Muffin, their eyes filled with sadness and anger. Molly, Muffin, how could you do this? Jerry was our friend. Pierre, yeah, we trusted you. We never thought you'd be capable of something so terrible. Muffin shuffled her paws, looking sheepishly at the ground. Muffin, I, I don't know, I just got so angry. He kept taunting me and making fun of me, and I just... Snap. Mercat stepped forward, her expression stern. Mercat, Muffin, that's no excuse for what you did. You knew how much Jerry meant to us. He was part of our family. Pierre, yeah, and now he's gone because of you. Molly, you've really let us down, Muffin. I could feel the weight of their disappointment and sadness in my chest. The cheerful atmosphere of the toy dollhouse had been replaced with a heavy, painful silence. I swallowed hard, feeling the tension in the air. I typed, guys, I think we need to take a moment to calm down and think this through. Fighting amongst ourselves won't bring Jerry back, and it won't help us figure out what to do next. The other cats looked at each other, seeming to consider my words. Pierre, you're right, we can't let our emotions get the best of us, but what are we going to do about Muffin? Molly. 
Yeah, we can't just overlook what she did. Her cat nodded. We need to decide what to do with her. I knew I needed a moment to clear my head, so I decided to take a ride on the Catavator, the makeshift elevator I had built out of blocks to reach the different rooms inside the toy dollhouse. As the platform ascended, I felt a sense of relief to get away from the tension on the ground floor for a moment. I reached the top and stepped out, taking a deep breath of the still, silent air. For a few moments, I just stood there, looking out at the mini-world I had created. All the tiny details, the furniture, the toys, the decorations, they all seemed so innocent and harmless. But now, they felt almost mocking, as if they were a reminder of the happiness and joy that had been shattered by Muffin's actions. I frowned, noticing the ominous change in the sky outside. The once peaceful toy dollhouse world had turned dark and sinister. The text in the corner read, Weather, heavy sandstorm, storm caused by something nearby. What could be causing this sudden change in weather? The ear-piercing meow that cut through the air was so jarring and loud that it felt like it was physically assaulting my eardrums. I winced covering my ears as I felt a pang of pain and a warm trickle. Blood was oozing from my ears. This was no ordinary cat meow. It was something unnatural and sinister. I gasped as I saw Muffin's familiar face appear outside the dollhouse. But something was off. She was no longer the innocent and cheerful Muffin I knew. Instead, she was bloodied and surrounded by diminutive endermen that appeared just as eerie as she did. As the other cats and I ran out of the dollhouse, I saw Muffin and the Enderman destroying everything in their path. Blocks and toys were flying everywhere as they tore through the once vibrant rooms, reducing everything to rubble. It was like a nightmare unfolding before my eyes. The chaos surrounding me was overwhelming, and my heart was pounding in my chest. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, an ear-piercing sound started. It began low like a deep humming note, and then steadily rose in pitch, each second bringing another shrill, high-pitched whine. The endless cycle of building tension made it feel like my head was about to burst. I desperately tried to get to Muffin, calling out to her as I stumbled through the rubble. Muffin, stop this, I cried, my voice drowned out by the constant, shrill sound. What are you doing? But Muffin didn't respond. Her expressionless eyes fixed on the destruction ahead. The Endermen surrounding her seemed equally unresponsive, their empty gazes locked on the chaos they were causing. It was like they were mindless drones, following Muffin's orders without question. As I neared Muffin, I could see the blood smeared all over her fur and the crazed look in her eyes. She seemed possessed, like something else was controlling her actions. I reached out, trying to grab her arm, but she shrugged me off with surprising strength. Frustrated and desperate, I tried again, pleading with her. Muffin, please, you have to snap out of it. This isn't you. You're destroying everything. But my words fell on deaf ears. Muffin simply shot me a cold, almost hostile glare before resuming her destruction. The Enderman followed her lead tearing apart the remnants of the dollhouse with ruthless efficiency. I gasped as the Minecraft app suddenly glitches out, filling the screen with a chaotic mess of blocks and distorted images. It looked like the kind of anti-piracy screen people talked about, but this felt all too real. As I stared at the glitched out screen, I could feel my heart sink. The hacking felt like a violation, like someone was tampering with my most personal space. Fear and disbelief washed over me as I tried to navigate the chaos on the screen. I stared in disbelief as my computer shut off abruptly, smoke streaming out of the vents. The silence that followed felt eerie and final. I tried pressing the power button, but the computer refused to turn back on. 
It was as if the hacking had completely fried the system. I sat there, stunned, my mind racing with questions. What just happened? Why was Muffin acting this way? And why had my computer been hacked? It all seemed like some sort of twisted nightmare, yet here I was, living it in real time. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel a sense of dread settling in. This was far from over. I leaned back in my chair, still reeling from the experience. The silence felt heavy and oppressive, like the calm before the storm. I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was on the horizon. Little did I know, the real nightmare was only just beginning. Suddenly, a chilling thought hit me like a wave. If Muffin was capable of such destruction, and the Endermen were following her lead, what else were they capable of? The thought sent a shiver down my spine. And if they were able to hack into my computer, what else could they do? The memory of that fateful night continued to haunt me. My old computer was permanently damaged, and despite getting a new one, I was always hyper-aware of the potential for another attack. The experience had left a deep sense of unease and vulnerability, as if I were constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. This Minecraft creepypasta story was written by me, Fluffy Flufferton. I drew inspiration from my own childhood memories of playing Minecraft and combined it with a pinch of horror to create this chilling tale. I hope you enjoyed it.